الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الحمد لله حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه مباركا عليه كما يحب ربنا ويرضى جل جلاله وعم نواله والصلاة والسلام على سيد الحبيب المصطفى صلى الله تعالى عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وبارك وسلم تسليما كثيرا إلى يوم الدين أما بعد My dear respected elders, brothers, sisters, listeners at home, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. In the recent past, I've had a number of questions from people about, uh, they were asking guidance on how to deal with these modern day means of communication like uh, Facebook and uh, Twitter and Messenger, the different types of messengers that are available and WhatsApp and so on and so forth. And really, to tell the truth, it's nothing new. It's new in a sense, it's just a new means, it's a new way to do something. But at the end of the day, what's behind it is the same thing that humans have been dealing with since the beginning of civilization. It all comes down to the fact of how much time are you willing to waste? How much time and focus do you want to give unnecessary things in your life? How much indulgence do you want to do in things that are not really going to benefit you in the future? Are you even willing to think about your future and what effects your actions will have today on your life tomorrow? Are people even willing to think that? And these are basic, fundamental human questions that insania has been mankind, humanity, the Adamic race has been dealing with since the beginning. Wasting of time is as old as man himself. And it's nothing new. This is just a new thing. The Prophet ﷺ told the people during his time that you must not sit around on ways, on the roads, street corners. You see this a lot in villages. Outside mosques, you see this. It's quite traditional. Don't stand around and don't stick around and just talk and essentially waste your time and so on. And they had a good point. They came back and they said, it's necessary for us to have some kind of gathering place like that because we need to speak to each other. It's very difficult to formally go to somebody's house all the time. I guess that's probably their understanding. That, la budda lana. It's necessary for us to have these majalis. So then the Prophet ﷺ provided some guidelines. He says, okay, fine. Make sure then you don't block the pathway. You make sure you fulfill the rights of the road. You fulfill the rights of the road. You keep your gaze down. This was another thing. Ghaddul Basar. You keep your gaze down. These are some of the basic things that the Prophet ﷺ said that if you really have to congregate and speak about something, whatever the case is, you know, it's important to do these things sometimes. So he gave some etiquette. He gave some necessary things that they should observe so that they fulfill the rights of this means of communication and this gathering. And the same thing applies whether you're on Facebook. And the same thing applies whether you're on Twitter or WhatsApp or whatever the case is. Now, to cut it down a bit more, let us look at it from how these means of communication, and I mean by this, you could go as far as Skype and Yahoo and Hotmail and Google and all of these messengers, then the basic email itself, then you have all of these other means of communication, the WhatsApp, that's a new one. Well, it's not new, but it's one people are going crazy over because it's free. It's free for a certain amount of time. They extended their time and they were going to start charging. So because it's free, people are like, it's free, we must make use of it. It's a deal. The butter is cheap in Sainsbury's. So we must go and fill up even though we may never use it. So this one, just speak as much as you can before they start charging. La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. Women, do you hear? This is, this is, this is what is this? Can you believe it? You've got people now coming in, husbands who are complaining. Some respectable husband came to me the other day, a respectable man in the community. And he is angry at his wife for this reason, that she's always on WhatsApp. And they're a decent family. They're not a broken marriage. Their marriage is not on the rocks. They've got older children, you know. And he's complaining about his wife, right? A decent lady who is on WhatsApp and she can't get off it. La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. 
And you know, we've got different fitna in different levels. I mean, I don't want to pick on the women or the men or the youth. But we all have an aspect of this that we need to understand. So if I start from the youth, one thing about the youth is that they're still finding their way in the world. As patronizing as that sounds to you, right? Normally youth, when you try to tell them that's bad for you, they think it's patronizing. They think like... You guys don't get it. I mean, weren't we your age at one time? You know, weren't we your age at one time? Like, we just grew up, didn't we? I mean, we just became 30 and over. We were never 16 and 17, so we don't know. Right? So, that, that's how they, they think. They think we're condescending when we speak to them. But that's not true. Believe me, it's just out of advice. So, the main thing there is that because they're still trying to find their way in the world what's good, what's bad. This is really attractive because it gives you a way to talk to your friends even though you might have to be grounded at home, even though you're sitting on the dinner table or on the floor or next to your parents in the room and you're supposed to be talking to them, you're talking to your friends. You're talking to your friends on Twitter and WhatsApp and these other things, boys and girls I'm talking about, right? They're sitting next to their parents, their parents think they're sitting there, maybe even doing their homework looking up some information, right? And what they're doing is they're chatting away. Even if they don't want to, as soon as you hear the ping, then you get distracted. So you have to respond. And subhanAllah, in some cases, the, the children will be sitting there and as the Prophet ﷺ said, he said a time will come, sign of the day of judgment. When children will distant their father, meaning their parents, and bring close their friends. And subhanAllah, this shows us a unique way of doing this. You can be sitting next to your father, or your mother, or your brother, or grandfather, or grandmother, or whoever it is, and yet you, your heart and your mind fully with your friends outside, through the screen. I mean, tell me if you haven't done that. You know, I'm talking to you, tell me if you haven't done that. Right? Someone's gonna say, hey, you know, whatever, the TV is not even an issue anymore. This is so strong. And the problem with this is you're wasting away your life. I'm not saying you can't chat with your friends, exchange ideas, make plans to do something decent. These are means of communication. All of these are means of communication that can be used positively or negatively. Just don't go crazy over them. Just don't go crazy over them. That's the main thing. Use them positively, it's fine. But remember, how much time do you have to be online with them all the time? Do you have to respond to everything that comes your way and it cannot wait for three hours until you finish? You can't have a time for it? See, normally, when you had to go out to meet your friends, then obviously it takes a physical exertion to go out a certain number of times. There's weather conditions. There are places you have to be. There were a lot of restrictions when you had to physically go and visit your friends. Whether you're a youth or you're a, a woman in the daytime wanting to go out and talk to her friends. Or a man for that matter. Then it became easier with the phone. But still it costs money. Then you had the free minutes. And so I, I, I really can't get it. I mean I have a certain number of minutes but I hardly ever run out. And believe me, I'm not a person who doesn't speak on the phone. I mean I, I have to speak on the phone. Because many people want you to speak on the phone. But I get calls from people for questions and other things. And... Their minutes run out. They're calling and then suddenly the phone goes and I'm like, what's wrong with you? Like, are you gossiping so much that you don't even have minutes left that when you want to ask a fiqhi question, your minutes run out? Right? I've had people say, can you please call me? I've got a question to ask you. I'm like, okay, no problem, but why? Right? Because their minutes run out. Then it costs too much. It's just ridiculous just not managing our time and our resources. And then we're saying this country is in recession. Believe me, we have a hundred times better than many countries in the world. A hundred times. Here, I mean, just to give you an example, you go out, everybody is riding a bike, has got a decent bike. You go to a third world country somewhere. Everybody's riding a messed up bike. Old, 10 years old, 15 years old. Who rides a 10 year old bike today? Right, cars, the same thing. Who's got a car here that's older than 10 years old? And then we're saying we're in recession, we've got problems, I mean, come on. Right? It's just, they want you to spend more. That's the recession that you won't spend as much. You'll start using your articles for longer. 
That's the issue. They just want you to buy because they think the success of a country economically is that you must continue to buy and spend. And subhanAllah, they give ratings for that. It's ridiculous. And they brag about it. Today was the biggest day of the, the sales there. So what? What is that? Believe me, some of us, we think our children are angels. And parents will not believe what their children are up to. Because those children are so clever at hiding stuff. They could have some serious bad stuff on their phones and iPods and you won't even know even if you checked. Because the, the folder is secure, it's hidden, you can't even see it. Unless you know how to unhide these things. It could be relabeled. System file. You know, cash folder. Not cash, cash money, but computer cash. Right, memory folder. And you're like, oh, okay, that's a memory folder. You know, that's a system folder. I shouldn't touch that. That's where, that's where the system is getting messed up. Now, we, got, we get to men. I don't, I, you know, we don't have much time to speak. Uh, for men, the, the main thing is that even if you're a, a person who's working, emails, especially when you're, uh, there's surveys, there's studies that have been done, done on this, that if you are getting constant um, updates about a new email coming in, and every time you go back, then you come back to your work. Even though it just takes maybe 10 seconds to look at that email, it'll probably take more than a minute or two to get back into the focus of your work because you've just been distracted, you've gone somewhere else, you have to come back, concentrate, gather your thoughts and start working again. Now, if that's happening in an hour, and this happens to most of us who are working on a computer, in an office or at home or wherever, in an hour, how many emails do you get? At least 10 emails? That is 10 times at least two or th three, right? That's, you, you spoil so many minutes, you're less productive. Sheikh Zakaria Kandalwi, rahmatullahi alayhi, Sheikh Uladi is the author of numerous books. Just one thing that I will, I, I hope I can do one day in my life. He had a time in the day, I think it was from a certain time in the morning to 11 o'clock where he would go upstairs and that would be his time of writing. There was absolutely no distractions, no phone, no letters, no meeting, nothing. That is the time when he would just sit and write and do his work. Just cut away from everything. Another scholar just told me recently, he says, I've made a vow. I've made a vow that every time I go onto the internet between the times of, I think it's 8 and 5 or 9 and 5, I have to pay 10 pounds. And I put a box there on my desk as well. I vowed to Allah that I will do this. So every time I go onto the internet or check my email during that time, I'll have to pay 10 pounds. It's going to get expensive and I will stop. And I've stopped, he says. He's a very productive scholar. Very productive alim. You, if we've got a problem, we need to deal with it. And then when we get to the, the women... I mean, subhanAllah, women want people to talk to, especially if they're at home. Now, as I said before, you'd have to go outside. Or you'd have to sit on the phone. Eventually, it starts costing money. It looks a bit weird to be on the phone all the time. But with this WhatsApp, the problem is that you can be on it as much as you want. With convenience. So you could be stirring a pot and you can be on WhatsApp, messaging away. And the worst is, the more friends you have on WhatsApp and the group that you make, the worse it becomes. Because if you've got one friend there, how much is the one friend going to say to you? You've got 10 friends, they all have their thoughts. We cook this today. And it looks like this. It, it seems pretty innocent. But I'm talking about the time waste. Now seriously, the women who are listening to this and who are on this WhatsApp like this 24 hours a day, right? Think about it. Shouldn't you cut your time down on this? Like every few minutes you're going to check. Oh, is there any new? And yeah, there's another 10 messages. I have to check them. It takes five minutes to check that. You might feel like responding to some of them. Right? You're finding out about other people's lives that and it's not necessary for you. Oh, my husband's telling me to get off my WhatsApp. That's a message you get. Another one. Um, these are real life stories I'm talking about. Right? Another one. The husband is complaining because the phone at night time is, is beeping every few moments because his message is coming. Somebody's woken up for Fajr or Tahajjud hopefully and they're messaging now. I've woken up for Tahajjud. Right? So now it's disturbing these couple who are asleep. Man, put it off. The husband gets angry. But if I have a husband who comes to me and he is like, why don't you guys talk about this? There must be a problem. Right? There must be a problem. So look, if you have to be on WhatsApp because it's free, man, it's not like buying butter that's on sale. You know, you don't have to like pump it all out. You don't have to like, type of thing, you know. It's not about that. 
at the end of the day, regardless of what the fitna is, what the means is, what the means of communication is, they're going to constantly evolve. I haven't even started on Facebook yet. That's another whole story on its own. And it's being floated. Right? It's a big money-making thing at your and our cost. But that's something else. That's for another time. The main thing is that we must realize this. If in the Sahaba's time, what was the complaint to the Prophet ﷺ? A wife came and complained, a Sahabiya. My husband, he doesn't give me time. Why? Not because he's on the internet all the time. Not because he's on his WhatsApp all the time. Not because he's sitting and openly watching pornogra pornography. It's got to that level that people are not just doing hidden, but people are doing it openly. And it's creating damage within families. Like the haya is gone completely. Right? Is that the complaint that the Sahaba were making, that the Sahabiyat were making to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa We've come to a level where men are complaining of their wives that they are not doing their household chores. They don't give us time because they're constantly on that thing. I'll do it. And the women, it's not like they are doing this in a mischievous way. They just they can't help it. Oh, I'll cook, I'll cook, I'll cook. And then they'll have to do a quick dish that doesn't taste nice because, you know. And then that's going to cause another problem. These are th things that you might laugh about, but seriously, they're to be considered. Let's not blame these things. They want to make money. Facebook wants to make money, so it's going to make communication as easy as possible. But do you have to be stupid enough to go and toe the line, not think about it, just for moments of trying to gain some honor, reveal everything about yourself, to look cool or to look bad or to look whatever, sick, whatever the words they are. I mean, subhanAllah, that's exactly what it is. You know, nowadays the words sick and bad mean good. But really, it's sick and bad, right? Because words have an effect. You know, the words have an effect on, on, on whatever it is. That's why the Prophet Sallallahu would change bad names for people. The names were not pleasant names. Like a person who came, his name was, it meant harshness. Sallallahu said, no, you're sahal, you're simple, you're easy, soft, you're compassionate. He changed the name because it has an effect. And the person's son said, yes, my family did have harshness in them. Names have an effect. And even the names on his Facebook and things like poke, shaitan pokes. The Prophet ﷺ said when a child is born, it cries because the shaitan pokes it, except Maryam, except Isa and his mother. Anyway, that's another story. That takes another story. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to think about these things. To really think about our lives, whether we're youth, what are we going to do in the future? Is this how we want to waste our time? Men, is this how productive we're going to be because life is about to end? And women, is this how we want to do the things? Yes, we use all of these things in their rightful way, in a way to ease communication, not to abuse communication and abuse relationships. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preserve our relationships, give us true understanding of the deen and of the, of the world that makes it easy for us to follow the deen.